Epidermolysis bullosa is often described as the worst disease you've never heard of, a gene mutation resulting in skin that is extremely fragile. The impact of EB extends beyond the patient to their whole family and support group. But EB is more than skin deep. Whilst the disease can be difficult to look at, there's so much more to EB that's invisible, as this report shows. Lucy has just graduated from St Andrews University. She refuses to be held back by a rare, debilitating skin condition, epidermolysis bullosa, or EB. So if I were to fall down, instead of getting a bruise, my skin would come off and it would be a wound resembling a third degree burn. It's a pain that surpasses words. So the word terminal, like my diagnosis, it grew up alongside me sort of like a shadow. It's not a condition that gets better over time. It gets worse. The condition is rare, affecting one in 17,000 in the UK. Currently, there is no known cure, no specific treatments, and people with the most severe form can also die early. Lucy has to bandage up very painful wounds. The constant pain and itch can be a huge mental battle. So epidermolysis bullosa, or EB for short, is a group of genetic skin conditions, really characterised by fragility of the skin, so minor knocks or friction to the skin cause blistering. Beyond that, you can get problems internally as well, so perhaps blistering or scarring of the mouth and the esophagus and other internal complications, renal disease, cardiac disease, sometimes anemia. Lucy has the support of her family, friends and boyfriend. She shows her skin and uses Instagram to raise awareness. Growing up, she was once asked if she'd been mauled by a gorilla. Now she's modelling for Vogue Italia. I got stopped by an older woman and she said, I felt the heat rush to my face, I was ready for the what happened to you questions, but instead she said, I think I saw you in a magazine. <laughs> and I couldn't, it took me a second to recover because I couldn't believe it. And she kept telling me how she Googled my condition and she wanted to know more about it. No two cases of EB are ever the same. Everyone has a unique experience. I'm just about to talk remotely to 14-year-old Vazil just before he has his dressings changed. This is a process that can take up to five hours. Basically, there's dressings on every single part of my body, except what you can see is my face and probably just this bit of my arm and my hand. Due to secondary school, I now have to do half the dressings in the morning and half of them in the evening. And then as soon as I come home, I don't get any time to rest. I need to go straight off and start those dressings again. So it's a really long period of pain, basically. When Fazil was born, his mother was not allowed to cuddle him. So he was placed on a pillow so she could cuddle the pillow instead. It's not that you will say, OK, our child got this condition. He will stay like this. No, it's, it's affecting every day to day. And it's getting worse day by day. The fingers start getting fusing, the esophagus fuse, the eyes blister, the nails came off, they never came back. The toenails fused, it never came back. The condition impacts the whole family due to the level of care required. My brother will be sleeping above me on the bunk bed and he'll just have to deal with me crying that night. And he knows that I can't pour water out of a jug. He knows I can't open my bag because, because of my webbed hands. Being a brother, it's amazing how much he actually does for me. Whilst currently there is no cure for EB, there is still hope. At the moment, the treatments that we have for EB are largely supportive. So we're trying to deal with symptoms and deal with things like wounds uh, to manage somebody's open areas of skin. So it might be bandages, painkillers, medicines to try and deal with itch, which is an enormously common and disabling problem in EB. So although we don't have anything that alters the trajectory of the disease at the moment, there is hope on the horizon. There's an awful lot of research going on and early phase clinical trials looking into new modalities for treating EB. Things like gene therapy, cell therapy, new novel kind of drug therapy, which offer for the first time real hope that we can change the progress and the natural history of the disease for people living with EB. Despite the constant pain, Fazil won a place at grammar school, has taken up karate and even tried bungee trampolining. You know what, I have this one motto, it's never give up. That's my one motto and I put it to everything. I force everyone to pad the actual harness up with foamy dressings just so that I could do the bungee trampolining. And I did it. 
and it didn't hurt me at all and it was amazing. Lucy has landed an internship at Sotheby's. The one thing EB could not touch was my mind. It couldn't touch my ability to learn. It couldn't touch my ability to teach others. So I decided to let my education and ability to learn take me as far as it possibly could. I would love to get my doctorate someday. I've always wanted to get a doctorate since I was a child, and the fact that it is on the horizon is something I am very grateful for being told from a young age that I might not live to see adulthood. So the fact that I am in adulthood, not only that, I am have the ability to earn a PhD is, some, is something I never thought possible.